Okay, we're on. Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper and Cookware. I'm going to give a brief t tutorial ahead of the second half of this video about tinning copper cookware. I was out west this past week and a lot of people were, were really interested in learning about the tinning process, why it's done, a little bit how it's done, and there are a lot of really great videos out there of artisans in Europe who tin still with the old method but they just kind of do and they don't explain at all what they're doing <laughs> so you're just watching and not really sure what's happening and um, so I wanted to give a brief overview before I actually show the tinning video and um, so this morning when we were tinning as you can probably tell I look like I I came in from the shop I burned a hole in my thumb and I burned off half my hair and I'm uh, trying to remember how to get back into the groove of things after being gone for almost a week but it is the process of bonding the tin to the copper cookware exterior to make the copper cookware food safe since you cannot should not cook in unlined copperware you can get it in stainless but if you're doing it by hand the way artisans do it and you don't have access to a football field length of bimetal of, of copper and stainless that have been pressed together, then you do it this way. What is happening over the heat that you will see is I'm heating the copper up to the point where it will allow the tin to bond to it. When that happens, the two metals with tin and, and copper are both non-ferrous, meaning they don't contain iron. They're bonding on, the, on a molecular level where I'm creating one atom thick of bronze. The uh, structures, the lattice structures of tin and the lattice structures of copper, and I'm not going to get into the hexagonal anything, but suffice to say they kind of exchange electrons and they create that one atom thick of bronze in between the two of them, which is what we call a molecular bond not a mechanical bond. So there's your vocabulary for the day. And when that happens, then the, the cookware is food safe. What I'm also doing, which you'll see in the video, and you also will see this if you're uh, looking at some of these other uh, artisans who are making it and not really explaining it, they're spraying a flux in after the copper is hot. And what that's doing is helping to facilitate that molecular bond. You can do it um, with a chemical, we actually use um, Harris Flux, so if anyone's going to ask, it's Harris, and that's what we use to spray in. It's a, just a, a chemical compound that burns off during the tinning process. It doesn't stay in the pan. In fact, if I don't move fast enough, I will actually end up burning the flux off, and then you always have to add more on. And if you want to use a all natural way to do it you can use pine rosin so go outside climb a pine tree find that chunk of you know dried resin from an injury on the tree and then pound that into a powder I have some of that too it's a pain in the butt to clean off because it doesn't burn off it leaves like this brown sticky residue you almost have to like pick off or use like rubbing alcohol to get off and um, you can also in a pinch use like soap <laughs> as a flux so um, that's what I'm spraying in. That's what people are spraying in before they are tinning. And then the tin itself is just a pure lead-free solid tin. Usually there's a percentage of copper in the bar and that goes in and we're using either a cotton uh, wad or even a piece of insulation like what goes in your house. That also can work and you flux that up too to create a smooth finish and then you're wiping that tin. A piece of advice, this again is not discussed in detail, so I'm going to kind of put it out there for anyone who's interested in trying this on their own without um, working with um, an artisan or have a master smith to work on uh, under your handles, whether it's two handles or one long handle, they're going to draw off the heat from your copper pan. So when it's sitting over the heat, imagine, you know, the heat is distributing evenly throughout the, the entire copper component except for where your handles are riveted on. And that's because those metals don't heat as quickly as copper. So they're drawing the heat 
off of the body. And and so the best way to imagine it is, is your body, your copper cookware is heating, but that place where the handle, I'm just going to pretend it's really like a long handle, it has to kind of grow all the way to the end of the handle and back again. Like the whole handle needs to be hot before that particular part of your copper body component is hot enough to easily take the tin. So just be cognizant of that when you're you're trying to tin and if you're wondering why it's not really working in certain areas where the rivets are, that's why. So and now I'm going to switch over to the video from this morning where I'm tinning and as always, if you have questions about the process or anything that I'm using or any steps that I might not be explaining well or forgot to explain because I kind of know it in my head but I forget to say it, um, leave comments, questions, observations, things like that, and always feel free to reach out. Thank you, and uh, I'll see you on the internet. You can see the heat starting. Oh no, I wouldn't say dumpy yet, but it's just something I saw. Um, what does his name do that? Dan. Dan, when Dan he was does. demonstrating. Yeah. You know?